for my next trick. I will now calculate the Compton shift for a relativistic electron. Okay, sorry, the photon's interacting with a relativistic electron. The Compton effect looks like this, uh, and I'm rather derivative, so I'm pulling a lot of my work from the video uh, about the non-relativistic Compton effect. I'm just running through the equations here. I'm not gonna teach you about why the Compton effect works or where it was performed or what Arthur Holly Compton's death mask tastes like. You'll have to look in other places for that. But the only modifications I'm gonna make to these equations are uh, to the energy equation. So all I have to do here is acknowledge some things about the initial energy. Like the incoming energy isn't just the energy of the photon. I'm gonna have another term. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit, but just to emphasize that we're not changing the momentum equations, especially if we leave them as P sub electron, rather than uh, talking about the mass of the electron times the velocity of the electron. What's nice about it is we can take some results that we had from the previous work, namely this result right here. This one, uh, I'll put it down at the bottom of the page. It came from our sum yum yum about the, um, the phi terms leaving through a, a nice summation. Anyway, we had this work right here, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you that this, being h over lambda quantity squared, is just p squared, like the magnitude of the momentum of the incoming photon, and this is the magnitude of the momentum of the outgoing photon, and then this is like two times the magnitude of the momentum of the incoming, okay, so you're getting the point, right? But over here, this is like, like ish. I just have to edit this with an ish, and instead I'm just gonna write it as the momentum of the um, scattered electron. So let's get that up here in the form that I've just said. I kind of want to talk about it as p square plus p prime square minus 2p p prime cosine theta. And then uh, over on the right side, I'm not going to do this business because it's kind of ish, but I'm going to do this business because it's kind of straight up good and right, and, uh, and then we're gonna take our energy equation, which we said was gonna be a little bit different, so let's get that written down here in electric lime. That's natural for energy because it could be in the electric form, right? And our energy equation says that the energy of the photon plus the initial energy or rest energy of the electron, because it has energy simply from the fact of being, all that stuff, right? And then we're gonna have the final energy of the photon, that scattered photon, which will be smaller because the final energy of the electron is greater. Great, and for this uh, electron over here, we're gonna say that energy in general of an electron prime or whatever is gonna be the mass of the electron squared times c to the fourth, right? Well, this is the square, right? So this is e is mc square, but then that's just the rest energy. Now we need to talk about the kinetic energy, which uh, when squared is p squared times c squared for even an electron, gasp, right? And so we'll shift here to battery charged blue because we're still talking about energy. And I'm just gonna rearrange this a little bit. What's my plan here? Well, I'm going to, um, <laughs> I'm gonna take this term right here and I'm gonna plug in the square root of this guy to it. And I'm just gonna be plugging in the things I know about, like, like the energy of a photon, for instance, is just P times C. And then I'm gonna to add to it the mass of the electron times C squared. That's the rest energy right there. And then I got myself some P prime times C, that's the scattered photon. And then I have this large screw, which is gonna be the mass of the electron squared times C to the fourth, plus the momentum of the electron squared times C squared. And that has to be in a screw because I screwed that equation right there to get the energy to plug it in right there. Okay. Okay, nothing weird about that? Okay, but we can make it a little bit better by, uh, for instance, uh, factoring out, what do you wanna factor out, a C? Let's factor out a C from all of this business right here, and then score both sides. Also, we'll subtract this from both sides. So the nice thing is we'll be getting rid of this screw right here. So over on the right side, my plan is just to be getting rid of that screw. So I'm gonna have mass of the electron squared times C to the fourth, plus the momentum of the electron squared times C squared. But over on this side, I'm gonna have that stuff without a C in it. So I'm gonna explicitly pull out the C squared because I already squared that, uh, I already squared both sides in this conception right here where the screw's gone. 
So in here, I have to have P minus P prime. See, when I took that over there, it was negative, right? Great. And then I add to it mass of the electron times C, that quantity squared. Now, this is interesting. It's MEC squared, but that was because I had previously factored out the C, and that C became a C squared when I squared it. Well, try it yourself. I mean, you don't have to trust me, but like when I did it, that's what I got, and I think it's okay. <sighs> okay, but this is interesting because we have P E square. Wait a second. It's still multiplied by the C squared, but this is multiplied by C squared, and that's multiplied by C squared, so you know that John Grisham book, A Time to Kill? That's kind of where we are right now. That becomes T, and yeah, great. That's a lot better. I can take this equation right here and plug it in right there. And that's gonna be fun, right? That's a word for what this will feel like. So let's give ourselves a little room and we can start on the next page. I'm just writing this stuff. But instead of that term right here, I'm gonna have those three terms. More terms, more fun. That's what they say about six flags, right? And this is actually more than six terms, so this will be even more fun. We have, in parentheses on the left side, P minus P prime plus mass of the electron times C. That quantity is square. And then on the right side, look at that. That's my entire left side. Isn't that nice? I like it too. Then we have mass of the electron squared times C squared. Remember the two, four became a two. And then I'm supposed to add in this term right here, which is those three terms right there. So I add in plus P square plus P prime square minus two P P prime cosine theta. And then we're gonna have to look at that for a second. It's actually going to be pretty neat when we distribute the square that happens right there. Get ready, because you're gonna get the first term square, and you're gonna get the second term square, and you're gonna get the third term square. Everybody knows that, right? But then what about the cross terms? Let's separate them like this. We could take a plus two, and then we'll just talk about the cross terms. Like, those get a cross term, so that's minus P, P prime, right? These guys get a, create a cross term, which is gonna be plus P mass of the electron times C, and these guys get a cross term, which is minus P prime mass of the electron times C. So we'll close those parentheses right there, and then we need to write the entire right side again, but we're fresh out of room, so we'll put a big equal sign right here, and <laughs> write that again mass of the electron square times C square plus the momentum of the photon initially square plus the momentum of the photon afterwards square minus two times P prime P prime times the cosine of theta uh, and stuff cancels right that's why we're here to kill uh, what cancels let's see what cancels like, like this is really incredible those cancel and like right next to them, those cancel. Let's do a double line so we can see what we're doing. And then these cancel. We'll make it this direction. Yeah, sure. And then a uh, two cancels? You've got to be kidding. Even a two cancels. We'll do this straight up and down. And enthusiastically. So the equation is now wonderfully simple. Let's go back to purple. Can we just stay on one color for just a second? It's so simple. Now, it only says negative P, P prime plus P mass of the electron times C minus P prime mass of the electron times C equals negative P, P prime cosine theta. Now, what would you do with that? Well, I got some stuff with the P and the P prime. And I want to get all those guys together so they can talk a little bit about it. And I also noticed there's this mass of the electron times C over here. Uh, so, um, well, I'm going to ignore it for now. No, 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 yes, no. What's the best? Thing? Well, I went through this once already and I had this great plan. Um, I guess my plan at this point was to get all the stuff. Yeah, okay, so let's just, uh, let's just put this. We'll keep our same equal sign, and this is going to be P and P prime, and I could go ahead and um, multiply that because it's going to be two terms over here. One's just P and P prime, right? So that's a one, and then I subtract cosine theta. Whoa! Smells like Compton! Then over on the left side, I'm going to get a P times the mass of the electron times C minus a P prime times the mass of the electron times C. Okay. 
That's fine, and now I think it's reasonable to divide by p, p prime. So let's take that equation and divide by p, p prime, because then we're gonna have some stuff in the denominator over here, and we can talk about it a little bit, at least. Let's just talk about it. And also the right side becomes one minus cosine theta, which is really great. Isn't that the relationship with like um, the, the potential energy increase if you have a swing and you push it up, but it's like, uh, like this distance that it goes up is like, L times one minus cosine theta, right? Isn't that neat? I mean, I think something's going on here. Like Compton, what the heck? And then over here, you're gonna have, uh, we divided by P, so I get the mass of the electron times C over P prime minus the mass of the electron times C over straight up P. So those kind of like went one into the other ones. And then we're gonna take that equation and we'll start at the bottom here and just keep going onto the next page. Look, I just came up with this system. It's like, it doesn't waste as much space. That's nice, huh? Oh, my paper's gonna have creases in them. I gotta sell these. You gotta give me $10 and I'll sign it and I'll say, I love you and I'll send it to you, it'll be original. Maybe $12. And then, um, well, what do I know about momentum? There's something about the momentum related to the wavelength, because this is light, right? So I'm thinking that wavelength is H over moment. That's the de Broglie relationship. Relationship. Um, so I could just say momentum is H over lambda, and then I could apply this to the bloop and to the bloop to see what happens. Um, guess what? It's going to give me an H up top. So I get the mass of the electron times C times H, Mitch. And then, oh, for like mechanics? No, this isn't really mechanics. Sorry. And then I get a lambda prime over here. But wait, no, that's not where it is at all because the momentum is in the basement. We've got an H down here and we've got a lambda prime up top, bro. And then this guy is the mass of the electron times C times lambda. We're gonna have the same form, right? Because it's the same business. But we just got lambda instead of lambda prime on the right side. It's still just one minus cosine theta. We're totally, totally finished because I just have to divide by mech over H. And then uh, over here, I'm gonna get H over mech times one minus cosine theta. Look what's left though. Over on this side, it was just lambda prime minus lambda, which is the shift. That's delta lambda because this is after, and that's before, and that is what Compton derived. And it agrees with his experiment, and so you're kind of faced with um, several things. One, uh, photons carry momentum and can scatter like billiard balls, transfer momentum and energy to electrons and actually lose energy while still maintaining their character as light. That's cool. And also, you kind of have to deal with the fact that electrons are relativistic, right? Because this is confirmed by experiment. So, I don't know. You don't like relativity? Fight me.